Thank you, Brian. <clears throat> oh. And thank you for Brian Roper for the beautiful uh, hors d'oeuvres we had earlier. But thank you so much to the Hall of Fame Committee for having me here this evening and nominating me. It's a true honor to be part of the Hall of Fame with people like Joan Rye, Dave Landers, and of course, staff. So I'm truly honored. Um, when I first got the call from Josh, he said I was one of his athletes, the first one that he's ever had come through the Hall of Fame that he got to call. And it's it was truly, not, like Josh was there for the whole time we were here at St. Mike's reporting in a, on it all, so definitely have to thank Josh for keeping track of everything. Probably wouldn't be aware of what I accomplished if it wasn't for Josh, so <laughs> you're awesome, and thank you for being my liaison through all of this. Um, I definitely have to acknowledge that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Nordic skiing. Um, I was part of this community because I wanted to come to St. Mike's for Nordic skiing, and so I do have to thank um, in high school Sean Halligan for creating a Nordic ski team uh, at our high school my sophomore year. Uh, he was a mentor for me and really got me into the sport, and his son Brian as well. And he basically made a community for me and my best friends to fall in love with this really weird sport. So <laughs> I definitely have to thank him and, um, of course, my parents, too. <laughs> and then, of course, I have to thank um, my ski coach, Molly, who is awesome, and her family, Jason, Maya, Levi, Sandy, Papa Dave, for letting us take over Sleepy Hollow every year and make the memories that are so precious to us all. Um, and, you know, supporting Molly to be able to dedicate her time to us. Um, you know, she left her two-year-old son six weekends in a row, you know, her first year coaching, so it wouldn't be possible without uh, the support that she was able to give us. Um, but I didn't really want to join uh, cross-country running at the beginning of it all. Molly just promised that we didn't train on concrete, so <laughs> I gave it a go, and, um, you know, Molly made it super fun, and my team was amazing, so I liked to go to practice every day and work hard and made the best friends of my life who support me now. And um, I, and that's the thing I value the most about being part of my St. Mike's teams is the friends I made along the way. I mean, Julia giving me back massages before races, Colleen writing cards that make me cry. <laughs> so I know that my team will be up here one day, also par possibly part of this Hall of Fame. Um, but it was hard to train in the summer without your beloved team. Um, I recently uh, read that an elite coach said that the difference between the best athletes and everyone else is that at some point it comes down to who can handle the boredom of training every day. And I definitely related to that um, in the su summer seasons, not having that team to train with. Um, but going to my senior year, I know our cross-country team was extremely dedicated, wanting to qualify for nationals. C coming in fourth the season prior, missing it by like, you know, 15 seconds, um, we really wanted to qualify for nationals the next year. So we, the fall season came around and everybody brought the dedication that um, we needed to make it to nationals that fall. While our squab of friends might be able to stay up partying, we would, had to be in bed just, you know, with our earplugs in, making sure we stayed healthy. Um, and then when Colleen, Lindy, Allie, Bree, Liz, Molly, and Julie and I qualified for nationals, and re for, it made it all worth it, and it was probably one of the best moments of my life, um, making history for this institution. And we didn't care that we did terrible at nationals in six inches of mud <laughs> because all it takes is all you've got. And we had a blast doing it. Um, and once again, kind of back to recognizing Molly. I think she's a model to all of us. Um, fierce, fun, and kind. She um, kind of goes above and beyond influencing us all with what she's done with equal distances in Nordic skiing. Um, I think is, is incredibly powerful. 
And I think we should all support her in joining the fight for equal distances and cross country running as well. I think she truly embodies our SMC mission of advancement of human culture in the light of Catholic faith. So I can't thank Molly enough. Um, and in that light, I think it's really important for me to thank those who fought for women's equality in sports. I have a funny little anecdote for my mother, or for my grandmother, where she loved to play um, middle school football. She broke her rib playing middle school football, but could not play in the high school because that wasn't an opportunity for her. So I definitely have to keep that into mind while I am grateful for those who fought for Title IX. Um, and then, of course, I have to thank my mom and dad for so fully supporting me in my Nordic and running careers. They came to race after race, despite the bitter cold of Nordic ski season and the wild rains in Kentucky. Um, during one of my running races, my father was cheering me on so hard that he accidentally followed me through the finish line gate, where he came in second place. <laughs> um, yeah. He caught me as I passed out, which is actually quite convenient. <laughs> But yeah, my parents are the hardest people, working people I know, and I hope maybe that got instilled in me a little bit. Um, and they really modeled good habit formation, which is kind of how I was able to be good at the sports I do. So thank you, and a thank you again to the Hall of, Midi Hall of Fame community for this honor. Uh, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Meg, who cannot be here tonight. And I'm humbled to be part of this Hall of Fame, and congratulations to the other 2022 20, inductees. Thank you.